Could this be a November to remember for the Oklahoma Sooners? Fifteen years ago, they had Red October, a stretch in which they played three straight games against nationally ranked competition. Texas that year, number 11. K-State was the top five team. And then two weeks after that, Nebraska was number one. And Oklahoma passed the test in all three games. Fast forwarding to this year, the Sooners, number 12 in the latest college football rankings, which of course means very little because the real college football playoff rankings, well, they'll come out for the final time on December 6th. That's what really matters. You fast forward to this year, a pivotal three-game stretch for the Sooners, TCU at home next week, Bedlam in Stillwater, November 28th, of course, this Saturday, the game of the week nationally, college game day in Waco, and of course, ABC, Saturday night, prime time, Sooners at the Bears with Baylor, a three-and-a-half point favorite in a stadium in which Baylor has never lost in their home stadium of McLean Stadium. Should be a high-scoring game. I think we can pretty much guarantee that no matter who wins this game. Of course, I did mention earlier the college football rankings, and really the playoff rankings don't mean a whole lot right now. We know this because last year, Ohio State, the first rankings that came out, they were number 16, and they worked their way up to number four in those final rankings. That was about six or seven rankings later. So even though I know people are upset because the Big 12 does not have representation in its top four, the season is not over today, and it will not end next week nor the week after that. In fact, for the Big 12, as you know, this is their big time right now because their marquee games are happening right now. Just the way the Big 12 Conference and just the way that Fox, um, who, by the way, you know, has a right to Big 12 as far as television goes, just the way that both of them wanted it. And it's no coincidence, no shock that its biggest matchups, you know, with TCU, Oklahoma next week, Baylor, OSU next week, you know, you get two weeks from now, Baylor against TCU the day after Thanksgiving with Bedlam the day after that. It is no stunner that, you know, most of its biggest matchups are happening in the month of November. Of course, last week we had Oklahoma State, you know, remain undefeated by taking down TCU, even though the Cowboys are only up to number eight. Some thought that they would be uh, higher than that. But the thing seems to usually play itself out, whether it's college football playoff or prior to that, the BCS. And in my opinion, an undefeated Big 12 team is not going to get shut out. If we have a team that goes 12-0, which means Oklahoma State goes 12-0. Do I think they get in? Yes. If Baylor runs the table, goes 12-0, do I think they get in? Yes. If the Oklahoma Sooners can win their you know, remaining three games with all three coming against highly ranked teams, Will Oklahoma at 11-1 get in? Possibly. Of course, things might have to happen there beyond their control, but at least they're in the mix. So that's why this game this Saturday between Baylor and Oklahoma is so crucial. And, you know, unlike the last two years, you know, this game um, could very well wind up being one of those toss-up games. We think it's going to be high scoring, but it could be high scoring for both teams. Unlike the last two years, you know, where you had Baylor score over 40 and pretty much shut Oklahoma's offense down in that in that Thursday night game two years ago in Waco. And then last year, where the Sooners got off to a 14-3 lead, only to see Baylor score the next 45 points. And of course, Trevor Knight, um, you know, he got hurt, got knocked out in that game as well. And it was Bob Stoops' worst home loss ever. You know, that should be enough for the Sooners right there alone. Even if you don't look at the rankings, to really be angry at Baylor. Because, you know, how often does a team come in to you know, Gaylord Memorial and Norman and win. Not very, but how often does a team have their way? I mean, just win a game one-sided against the Sooners and Norman. Even more rare. So I'm sure the Sooners still have that, you know, bad taste in their mouth from last year. And this year, you know, they thought they were going to be facing Seth Russell, the uh, Baylor quarterback who had been in the system for so long, even though Bryce Petty uh, played the last two years. They thought they were going to get Seth Russell, who was the number one um, quarterback in the country in terms of passing efficiency. Um, but not the case, of course, because of the season-ending neck surgery. So you step in Jarrett Stidham, and, you know, this is only going to be his second start for a freshman. And, you know, with millions of people, you know, on ABC television watching this game live, you know, and, of course, the, the, the crowd that's going to be known as the McLean Stadium crowd that's going to be incredibly electric, incredibly loud, uh, this is going to be um, a pivotal moment for him, even though it's just his second career start, and he's just a freshman. So, you know, unlike, um, 
unlike Seth Russell, whom, even though he was a new starter this year, he had been in the Art Briles um, offensive system. I mean, he was very, very familiar with it. Stidham is not as familiar with it, and he'll definitely face a defense on Saturday that's a lot better than K-State. You know, K-State does not play that tight man-to-man. They'll give you cushion. And last year, you know, Oklahoma definitely gave Baylor cushion. They gave those Baylor receivers too much cushion. In fact, I think at one point in that game last year, Norman, uh, we saw uh, Petty complete, what, 14, 15 passes in a row. Oklahoma plays with that same philosophy this year as far as coverage. This game will be over before halftime. The Sooners must be aggressive. They must take chances. Yes, there will be times where they'll give up some big passing or running plays. Yes, Baylor is going to score some touchdowns. But it is impossible, in my opinion, to shut Baylor's offense down. Are you kidding me? You might say, well, they haven't played anybody yet. It's about the system. It's about a system for Baylor that has worked and has gotten better every year of this decade under Art Bryles. I mean, it's no accident that they're number one in the country when it comes to total offense. By the way, scoring offense, 57 points a game. Like I said, Oklahoma's not going to stop them. But what you got to do is find a way, somehow, the most important thing in this game is to contain Shock Limwood, the new Big 12 leading rusher. Well over 1,000 yards this season. Extremely tough to bring down, but hits the hole quick. You don't contain Baylor's running game. The passing game is going to have favorable one-on-one -on -one matchups because at that point, the Sooners will have to commit more players to the box. So for the defensive line, it's going to be a chore because you're going against a Baylor offensive front, you know, led by the All-American Spencer Drango. All those Baylor down linemen, with the exception of one, are seniors. So they've been there before, very familiar with the system, and usually they have their way with opposing offenses. But you must be able to contain that ground attack. And, you know, last week, Baylor had a lot of success offensively on the ground, but especially through the air with over 400 yards of passing. Um, of course, a lot of eyes are going to be on the corners for the Sooners in this particular game. Um, you know, it looks like you'll have Zach Sanchez back. Will he be 100%? How much will he play? Nobody knows that, even though, from what I've heard, he is practicing this week. So, You'll have Jordan Thomas on one side. Last week was not one of his best games uh, in the win against Iowa State at times. Had a hard time uh, matching up with the Iowa State wideouts. So that will give um, maybe Baylor a sense that they could do the same thing. Now, on the other side, of course, when you don't have Sanchez in there, you're going to have Dakota Austin. You know, he's gotten better, you know, with um, each passing game. But remember, um, he's still what you, would, what you might call a fish out of water and it's a far cry between the guys that he's been going against lately and also, too, against, you know, some of the best wideouts in the country. You know, talk about, you know, Corey Coleman, a guy I cannot believe he's not getting more mention for the Heisman. You know, 20 TD catches already for the season. And, we, and Baylor still has four games to go. Remember, uh, Baylor closes out the year uh, with uh, Texas early December plus the uh, OU game this week. And then they've got two other games after that with OSU and TCU. So 20 TD catches in Four, um, you know, with only four games to spare, that's pretty darn good. And it's not just him, though. I mean, you got to worry about, um, you know, you got to worry about Jay Lee and, of course, um, you know, Katie uh, Cannon. So speed galore, experience galore. And for the secondary, their job is going to be aided a little bit more if we see that front seven, you know, get in that backfield and hit to them a time or two, making him aware that the Sooner defense is going to be in his face all night long. Front seven, to me, will dictate the rest of this game, because I don't care how well the secondary plays, you can't contain the ground game, then you're leaving those um, defensive backs out there on an island, and it won't work. Offensively for Oklahoma, I do think that they'll have success in this game, probably more passing success than they will running. Remember, Baker Mayfield has completed well over 70% of his passes this season, 28 TDs, only four picks, and the ground attack, which was questioned, um, in September for the Sooners, and then that uh, October stunning loss to Texas. Ground game has really picked it up. Nearly 300 yards per game is what they've averaged over the last four. So that gives them confidence. Of course, you got to go against Sean Oakman and a Baylor defensive line. And I think Baylor's defensive line is the strength of that team because of the experience. Now, their back seven um, does not have as much experience. And I think for Mayfield, you know, those, that, that quick passing game, you know, making sure that, again, you get Neal and Shepard involved, use the tight end, Andrews, and even so much, you know, when you have Mixon and P. Ryan in at the same time, remember they could be used as wideouts as well. So 
This is going to be a high-scoring game. My final thoughts on it. I think no doubt it's going to be a pinball-type game. At the beginning of the season, I liked Baylor to not only win this game against Oklahoma from the matchup perspective, not from the loyalty perspective, because I want OU to win, of course, but from the X's and O's perspective, I just thought that too much speed on the um, Baylor side and also to the um, Seth Russell um knowing that system like he did was going to be too much for OU to overcome. But with a new quarterback for Baylor, even though he played well last week, it was against a K-State defense that has been vulnerable all season long. Sooners enter this game number one in the Big 12 in total defense. And yes, I do think the Sooners will give up some. But remember, too, that the Sooners are familiar with this type of offense because Tulsa ran it earlier this year and had success against the Sooners. I think OU will study that game tape against Tulsa like crazy, learn from some of their mistakes, and I do think the Sooners will get some takeaways in this game. Look for a lot of points, and you might call it a homer pick, but I think the Sooners get a much-needed win, and they're not going to vault to the top four in the college football playoff standings this next week, but they will at least make a little bit of a move and at least be in somewhat of a discussion. 45-42. I've got the Sooners winning on an Austin Seifert field goal late and beating Baylor, you know, in Waco um, for the first time since 2010, the year before RG3 won the Heisman. You get a lot of points on both sides, but I think Mayfield's play will be the difference. I think the defense will get some takeaways, and I do believe that special teams play at the end. A field goal by Seifert will seal the deal. 45-42 should be a classic high-scoring Big 12-type game. My picks will be later in the week. Me and the five-cent piece will go head-to-head. -head. And, of course, post-game of OU Baylor will be sometime Saturday night or early Sunday. Boomer Sooner.